<laughs> Thank you, Judy. <laughs> well, we are back and we are going to uh, give you what you have been looking for or you have been waiting for, which is the moon signs, okay? From Aries to Pisces. So, before we begin, let me just discuss uh, a few things about uh, the moon, the full moon. Oh, well, announcements first. Uh, again, thank you so much for your donations. Uh, almost been my time. Because I don't like to talk about advertising. But I'm forced to do so. Um, thank you for uh, this. I do like to say is that my subscribers and those of you who are giving me uh, money for my GoFundMe page, you know, some of you are giving me a hundred dollars, some of you are giving me two hundred, some of you are giving me fifty, uh, uh, two dollars. All of it helps. Uh, next month is the beginning of the theater season, so the monies will come in handy to begin the productions. And this time, I want you to be involved in it. Give me some ideas of some place to write, particularly with the political or sociopolitical atmosphere that's happening now in the country with the Trump era and that whole situation going on. And now the Cold War, where now the United States is, is retreating from its treaty with Russia concerning the Cold War, you know, something that they have been working on for decades. Now the United States is seceding. Uh, then there's that border war nonsense and holding the government at ransom you know, for, because of this border wall. And then there's the DACA children and the dream children and the immigration issue. There's so much upheaval happening in our country. All of it done by design. By design. So, um, I want to write a, a, a place concerning how this has affected us as private citizens in this country. How it has affected minority groups women, LGBT community. Uh, um, these are issues that are happening, affecting everybody. White, black, women, rich, poor, all across the board. Look at the federal workers who now haven't gotten paid in almost two months. They missed two paychecks. You know, this is a prelude of what's to come. And trust me, what's coming is not cute, it's not pretty, and it's not nature doing it. It's us doing it. Man, it's by design. We're getting ready to wag the dog and create another shock doctrine. We don't know what it is, but we know it's coming. Shamans, astrologers, seers all over the world, we know that it's coming. And Mother Nature also has in store a big shabang. And it's going to come in the form of an earthquake. So if Donald Trump is going to build this wall, guess what? Mother Nature will cause a great earthquake. And that wall will be coming down quicker than the walls of Jericho. Okay, so the gods are like, okay, go ahead, Adam. Build your wall. Let us crush it down. The trumpets won't come from no prophet. It will come from above. Okay, having said that, um, the moon faces, without further ado. The moon, you have to understand that there is a model. Right? There is a template model. As above, so below. For you to understand the moon, you have to understand the sun, which is attributed to Leo. Right? The sun is the life giver. The sun is the destiny. It is the direction where the soul is heading. The sun represents the goal, right? The sun, right? The sun represents the goal. The sun is the heart of our solar system, just like the human heart is at the center of the human body. It's not about the genitals. The heart is not here. The heart is not at the feet. The heart is at the center. So too, is the sun the center of our solar system and it is the heart of a bigger body that we don't even know. So if you have the sun in Aries, you are here to just, like the Big Bang, explode in every direction and spreading your semen all over 
the world. The known and unknown worlds. Aries represents Cranberry Martini. Oh, it's 12 noon. It's not morning, it's 12 noon. With the moon signs, like uh, I'm going to do the this series in the day. Because there's a lot to cover. And I'm still not done with compatibility and incompatibility of signs as defined by the sun in the signs, right? Uh, and, oh, I got to say something. Yes, I did do um, Gemini and Pisces twice. But you have to understand that I did Gemini and Pisces a year ago. And I had pneumonia. Remember, I was sick. If you look at my video, I'm half naked, covered up in a sheet. And you can see that I'm like physically sick. So I didn't feel that I gave Gemini and Pisces justice when I was that sick. But thank God that many of you love both videos. And that was a year ago. So I figured, let me redo it that I'm in a better state of mind. But thank God that my guides, my archons, the good ones, have been able to keep me on point even when I'm sick or when I'm inebriated or drunk or high, whatever. The information will never be corrupted. Otherwise, they would never let me drink and go into excess the way I do sometimes if it was going to interfere with the great work. That's not going to happen. So even in sickness and in health, I deliver. You know, thank to my spirit guides and my spirit beings or archons, for the lack of a better word, because that's really what they are. But I won't talk too much about that, though. So understand that that's why I did that. That's why I did it double. The sun in Aries is terrifying. The stars of Aries are terrifying. In fact, the gods of Aries are so terrifying, so horrific in nature, but so beautiful in glory that we cannot discuss them, even in the ancient wisdom teachings or in the ancient texts. From all over the world, from Tibet to India, it describes this terrifying aspect of area. All of it is. All of it is. It's so terrifying. Think of the Big Bang and the explosiveness of billions and billions and trillions of stars. Supernovae. All that is Aries. How could that be contained? It's like, and I hate to, and ladies, please do not get offended. It's like a man about to um, masturbate him. You know, the, 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 the constant upward movement of the hand on the, on the organ is creating a charge, a barometer, which builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, and then explodes with semen, right? And, and then, you know, that's what it does, you know, ejaculation. That's quite an explosive force. And when men ejaculate, the men scream in, in ecstasy. You cannot just orgasm and keep it contained. How could you? The same thing with a woman. And women go to multiple orgasms. You cannot hold that in. You have to, ah, scream and contain and urinate and defecate and all that because it affects the whole body. You know how orgasms do, right? Especially when it comes to a woman. And I have to explain that of a woman because it's that more intense than that of a man. You know, but it's still the same principle of charge building up, building up, building up, and then exploding with the orgasms. That is the terrifying but also beautiful exposition of Aries. Okay? Now, psychologically, psychologically, this is manifested by Aries' inconstant activity, inconstant restlessness. And Aries, the man and the woman, Constantly sexually aroused, constantly sexually ready, to, you know. Like they can have sex 24 hours, 24 7. It is an energy just doesn't leave, it's just incessant. That energy can be used to have sex all day, or it can be used to be productive and build organizations, build enterprises. Aries is very entrepreneurial, and he's quite the businessman. He is quite the businessman, okay? I'm trying to find my uh, lighter, which I just put over here. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, see. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. 
Uh, again, you know, when you're doing great things, the opposite polarity, the demonic, always has to interfere. Nothing you can do about that. It is, we're living in a world of duality. We have to deal with these archons. We just have to deal with them. We are so sorry about that, but that is what... Oh, I'm so sorry about that, but that is what archons do. The church calls them demons. They're not demons. There's no such thing as demons. There's no such thing as the devil. The devil and Jehovah are the same thing. And the demons that the church talks about are archons. <laughs> You'd be surprised how fooled we have been by the church. Which is why... Well, oh, okay. They just tell me not to go there. <laughs> you not go, oh God. Uh, you see, I was born with an Aries moon, and we don't censor anything, and we're not afraid of anyone or anything. Despite or regardless of how formidable it could be against us, you know, we will still tread where angels fear to tread. That is the strength and beauty and power and also terror of Aries. So when the moon, when the sun is in Aries, you are invincible, invulnerable. But with the Aries moon, you can make some very powerful enemies. Anim enemies that will vow to destroy you. Because Aries is invincible, invulnerable. Now, that's the moon. That's the feeling. Okay? But when, when we're talking about the sun, we're talking about action. When we're talking about the moon, we're talking about reaction. The sun is action. The moon is reaction. Reaction to what? To the actions of the sun. The sun is the goal. The moon is the means to get there. The sun is the soul. The moon is the ego and its 12 different personalities from Aries to Pisces. That's why when you become a born again Christian or you give yourself to God like many Christians do, right? They are surrendering the will of the ego to surrender to the will of the creator that substitutes their ego. So now they're like walking, obedient, obedient. That's what the church wants you. It doesn't want you to think. It wants you to be obedient, obedient. That's the moon. Remember, the moon rules the masses. The moon pulls the tides of the oceans. So the moon is mass and collective oriented, while the sun is individually oriented. It is your own destiny, your own path. And the moon is the means to get there. But with the moon, you have to have the approval of society, the approval of your family, the approval of everything that you stand for from the beginning of gestation in the womb to your upbringing up to being an adult at age 30. All of these influences of your childhood, your family structure, your schooling, your teachers, your friends, your enemies, your neighborhood, your work, pa, 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 pa. All of that, in addition to the genetic memory and profile of who you are, all adds up to the totality of the human being that you are to become. All of that is done by the moon. Which is why in astrology, the moon is so important. And you can be an astrologer and do wonderful works in astrology as an astrologer, just working on the moon alone. Alone. Back in the, in the Vedas, in India, before the, the zodiac, because the zodiac wasn't just ready-made, and he, poof, here it is. 
The early zodiac only had six signs, six constellations, and Virgo was one of them. Virgo is old, 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 old. The 12 lunar mansions, you know, the stars of Virgo are so old, that they're older than the Pleiades. Mm. That's what the opposite of Virgo is Pisces, the 12th sign going back to God. So Virgo and Pisces are powerful, powerful, tremendous wisdom. Oh, Lord Jesus. Far more than Sagittarius. Because Sagittarius is number nine. It reaches a certain point. But Pisces, oh God, it's, inf it's at infinitum. There is no definition when you get to Pisces. There's still a form and definition in Sagittarius. But as you get all close to Pisces, it loses form and breaks down to nothingness. What we thought we knew is nothing compared to what's outside of this bubble hologram of reality. So, the moon is reactive. The sun is proactive. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a combination. Let me, let, let me use myself. Let me use myself because you guys know me now for a minute. You know, you know, you know, I smoke, drink, drug, you know, I tell you know, HIV, gay, bisexual, gender fluid. I, I put it all out there. I put it all out there. Do I give a shit about your opinion? No, I absolutely do not. The best way I can be of service to you is to be myself. And that is the epitome of Aries. Whether it is the Aries moon or the Aries sun. The sword, the Excalibur, is the symbol of Aries. And the sword, you know, cuts both ways. Still, that's all wonderful and beautiful, well explained, but come on, let's get down to the real fucking nitty gritty. How is this related to personality? How is this useful information? Well, again, let us go back to the template. The sun and the moon. The sun is the father, the moon is the mother. As above, so below. So, wherever the moon falls in the horoscope is going to reveal a plethora of information concerning your own mother. Who she was, who she is. Who was she before she became your mother? She was a woman before she became your mother. She was a wife before she became your mother. She was a bachelorette before she got engaged to who would be your father. Who was this woman before she became your mother? All that is determined by the moon. The moon gives histories of everything about your mother, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, and the, the entire matriarch of the family. And, it, and the moon also provides information as to your own emotional development and how you will raise your daughters, whether you're a man or a woman, and how you will respond to the opposite sex. With the moon in a, in, a, in a man's chart. The moon in a man's chart. And we're going to discuss the moon in the signs, both the moon in Aries as a man and the moon in Aries as a woman. So this is going to be another very long series because the moon is different in the sexes. The moon is, in Aries is very different than the moon um, in uh, Aries in a woman's chart. They say that the Aries moon is the worst position for the moon. And when it comes to untaming the personality, the worst position for the moon in a woman's chart will be the moon in Capricorn. The moon in Capricorn in a woman's chart doesn't function very well, and I'm going to go into the details as to why. It functions somewhat better in a man's chart, the moon in Capricorn, but it still has the same psychological effects to both sexes, cut both ways. Remember, we're dealing with cardinal signs. There's no escaping the good and bad aspects of the cardinal signs and their respective duties. The moon is broken up into four quarters. Right? Right? That's one, the full moon. 
then the new moon the first quarter and then the second quarter all that all are the four phases of the moon that is also extremely important to uh, understand and there are 12 sub phases to the moon and behind those 12 sub phases we have what's called 28 sub sub phases which we call tinctures when the moon is about to be full you know you see like a disc you know it's like going up 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 getting more light every night, every night. Uh, 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 uh. it takes 28 tinctures before the moon gets full and it takes 28 tinctures before the moon becomes new each tincture is broken into a triad, and they are also connected to the signs of the zodiac. This aspect of astrology is highly complex. We won't discuss that here. Uh, maybe I'll discuss it in one of my books that I've been contracted to write. And that in itself will take me at least seven years to write. It's, because it's mathematical and it's highly complex. And, you know, the positions of the planets have moved since my birth. The positions of the planets have moved since the other astrologers who were the forerunners that I learned from, you know. So now everything, you know, it, the, the, the zodiac evolves and expands just like everything else in the universe. So in the day of tomorrow, the zodiac that we know today will not be the zodiac that we know tomorrow because it will change. There will probably be other signs added to the zodiac. Or it might be diminished, you know. But we know that it's morphing, you know, just like everything else. Even the God, Jehovah. He's not perfect, even, even though he's our demiurge, controlling this all here. He too requires love. He too requires evolution. Because gods do die, just like humans die. As above, so below. Read your mythology. A good book to read is by Bernadette Brady, uh, called, oh my goodness, it's about the constellations. Constellations of stuff. I forgot the exact, I have it somewhere here. Bernadette Brady, you need to read that book. At least the beginning part, the introduction. It, it will terrify you, fascinate you, and tell you some truths about astrology and our planet and our position as humans in it that will shock the living shit out of you. And the church knows this and keeps it veiled. Oh, God. The church has done so much, so much to deceive the world. This is why they want to kill the Pope. This is why plots to murder the Pope has been happening since the ages. There's a reason for this. There's a reason for this. Of course, I don't ascribe that or endorse that at all. But I understand why it's happening. Because the church is the biggest demonic deceiver of all. You know? But that's how the archons have set it up to be. And that's how, you know, I can't talk too much about that. We all get a phone call. Ring, ring! And you know who. So, um, that's the situation. So now, let us discuss. This is an introduction. This is an introduction. I'm giving an introduction. Uh, I'm going to go into more details about the Aries moon in a woman and in a man's chart in the second part. Okay? Uh, and, well, I'm going to do a first part and a second part. This isn't the first part. This is an introduction. You know, <clears throat> so I want you to understand that the moon doesn't have its own light. The moon reflects or bounces light from the sun. So without that moon, we would not have a shadow side. Human nature is composed of the good and the bad. The higher evolve and the lower evolve. The sun represents the higher evolution, while the moon represents the lower nature of man, the shadow aspect of man. The sun is angelic. The moon is demonic. This expression of the lower nature of personality is seen in accordance to the sign of the zodiac that the moon uh, possesses. And consequently, the downfall or the undermining of a man or woman will occur in the moon, 
and we're done with the introduction to Aries and the uh, moon signs.